So you all know how when we submit applications to the government, a new workplace or a college, questions are asked to determine your ethnicity. For colleges at least, they do this so they can have a variety of individuals with different races. Let's take a look at what happened on this college's campus that shaped our current admissions process. So we all know what MLK did for this country. He pushed for equal rights so that we can all live in equality. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. MLK's career led to affirmative action, which was used to give the lesser half, the otherwise known as minorities, equal rights. But this policy then interfered with the entitlement of whites. Soon after this was created, colleges from all over started using what was known as the recruitment program, which was the effort by legislation to improve education or economic opportunities for disadvantaged groups. In order to do this, colleges reserved 16 out of 100 seats for minorities solely based on their ethnicity. Even though some white individuals scored higher on their standardized testing, the minorities were placed at a higher importance simply because they were minorities. Alan Backey, an engineer who was 35 years old at the time and tested in the 90th percentile, who had also served in the Marines, fought at Vietnam, worked at NASA, and had a degree from Stanford, was one of the students who was rejected because the recruitment program was at a higher importance. After repeated rejection, Becky was furious he had been denied, so he decided he would take it to court and sue the University of California. First in California courts, then he would take it to the Supreme Court. While there, he pleaded the case that the school had overlooked or ignored the Civil Rights Act of 1964 as well as the 14th Amendment of Equal Protection. While this was going on, there were many protesters, mostly minorities, rising up against Becky, not because they had anything against him, but instead because they felt as if he won the case, they would lose their special treatment or privileges they fought for so long for. Also in this time span, there were other similar cases such as Gratz vs. Bollinger or Grutter vs. Bollinger. In all cases, the student was denied admission because the schools had overlooked them while heavily relying on reverse discrimination. So the Supreme Court had come to a decision, 5-4, to four, with Backey coming out with the win. The court ruled that the university's quota system was indeed against the 14th Amendment. They made it so that race could still be one of the several deciding criteria, but not the one and only factor. Basically, the court did what it could to make this mess go down as a win-win. They ended up getting Becky into the school, along with adding a minor change in the way the admission process works to make him happy. And on the other hand, keeping affirmative action in place to aid minorities through one of their hardships. To this day, colleges or any other schools want racial diversity, so they are still using affirmative action programs with Becky restrictions, along with a well-intentioned quota which differs from a regular overruling based on ethnicity, to making it just a factor in the many admission decisions. Racial injustice still continues to this day, but it is to a point that is constitutional. <laughs>